That's good. We are on live now. I mean, maybe it will take just a couple of minutes just to get audiences and so on. So by this time, we can talk about something else. By the way, how is the weather in um, Cope Day? Cold. <laughs> it's very cold. We've had a really cold week. Uh, I think, what is it, negative six, seven, something like that, pretty much every day. OK. It is almost so, same here as well, like it's very cold, but I mean, yeah. at the same time, it is snowy. So what I really like it. I mean, <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I like cold. I mean, I like snow actually more than, yeah. Because when it is snow, you know, it has more lights rather than it is dark. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's true. And That's absolutely got their true. Christmas decorations up now too. So there's lights everywhere and it's really pretty. In your house, or no? No, I, I, I don't have much in my house, but uh, <laughs> just around, you know? <laughs> around your house, around your flat. Okay, I see. I wasn't sure if you had gotten some kind of Christmas expectations or Christmas love or whatever you say, Christmas no, I, I, I have a lot of Christmas decorations, but I don't really put them up because nobody comes here, so it would... <laughs> No problem. Ne amazing. Next time we'll go there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll come and check out your Christmas decoration, Ryan. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We'll do that. Um, all right, then. So we can see that like already a few of the audiences has started joining with us. All right, then. So uh, the... Um, Dear viewers, I mean, good morning, good afternoon, and good, uh, good. I mean, good evening from wherever you are watching us today. So today we do have um, two special guests: one Karin and uh, another one Rahan from University of Kobde. Later on, they will introduce themselves even more. Um, so today we'll be talking about, of course, studying in Sweden, and then especially about University of Kobde. So please uh, feel free to watch the session and feel free to ask your queries, whatever you do have. We have uh, two special guests. They're going to answer your queries and so on. So please keep staying with us until we finish. Thank you so much. Uh, in this time, I would like to ask uh, Karin, could you please introduce yourself? Absolutely. My name is Karin Yonagord and I work here at the international office as the international co coordinator and Ryan. And I am Ryan. Uh, I have been a student here at the University of Havda for the last five years. I did a bachelor's and I did a master's and now I'm going to be a PhD student. Uh, so I'm also working for the international office, but I'm also here to give you a bit of an idea of what it's like to be a student here. All right. That's pretty good. So you are bachelor's students in the University of Kobde. I was a bachelor's student. Uh, did the biomarkers and molecular... No. No, I didn't. I did the molecular bio design. That's right. <laughs> and then for the masters, I did uh, biomarkers and molecular medicine. <laughs> so bachelor, and then you did masters, and then you are doing PhD. Yep, uh, starting a PhD so, this this next year. All right. So I'm actually in this time. I would like to ask Karin, do you have anything else apart from PhD later on? You know what I mean? Because we if want I... to, we, we want to keep Rahan. I mean, over there as long as it is possible. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to convince him to stay here, and you know, perhaps take our webinar. So I think I might have some tricks. You know, to right. do that. <laughs> All right, then no issues. Uh, thanks for introducing both of you. So in this time, I would like to ask you. So please uh, go for the presentation so that like in our audiences they will get to know about the universities and of course study in Sweden and so on more and more please go ahead um Thanks. i have to add it up right all right great we're Perfect. gonna start with a short video and then we'll dive right into our presentation after that yeah sure why not go ahead please <laughs> In the northern part of Europe, you'll find one of the most innovative countries in the world, Sweden. With just over 10 million inhabitants, Sweden is at the forefront in areas such as IT, industry, green technology, and life science. Sweden also has a great reputation when it comes to music production and game development. The capital of Sweden is Stockholm. It was founded in the 13th century, and it is one of the most beautiful capitals in the world. Just a few minutes away from Stockholm, you'll discover an astonishing archipelago with over 30,000 islands. 
thanks to its geographic location, all four seasons are very distinguished. In the northern parts of Sweden, during the summer, the sun never sets, and during winter, the snow depth often reaches over one meter. The Swedish spring offers a cavalcade of flowering fields, and in the autumn, vibrant colors in the trees make for a beautiful sight. With just a two-hour train ride from Stockholm, or one hour from Sweden's second largest city, Gothenburg, you'll find Hovda just beside the mountain, Bilingen. Nestled between Sweden's two largest lakes, in an area full of historical heritage and beautiful surroundings, there are an abundance of nature experiences and wonderful sights just around the corner. Hovda has about 60,000 inhabitants and has a warm and pleasant city center with a variety of restaurants, cafes, and shopping venues. There are also plenty of green areas, and in one of the city parks, you will even find a swimming lake. Hovda is one of the leading game development cities in the world. A number of successful studios with world-famous games operate here. The city is also internationally known for its manufacturing industry. The University of Hovda is located in the city center, just a five-minute walk from the train station. The university has a beautiful and green campus that showcases a welcoming and modern study environment that features an aesthetic that blends buildings that are more than 100 years old with cutting-edge technology and accessibility. It doesn't take more than a couple of minutes to get from one side to the other, and all of the university's student accommodations are within walking distance from the university campus. The university was established in 1977 and has about 9,000 students and is specialized within these areas. One of the university's distinct advantages is the close connections between students, teachers, and even local industry. At the university, there is a student union that primarily works to ensure that students have an active influence over their study situation. They also organize social activities for the students and run a pub and nightclub just a few minutes walk from the campus where student dinner parties and many other activities are held. The research at the university aims to make a difference locally, nationally, as well as internationally. That is why research efforts are carried out in tight collaboration with the community. The university is one of five worldwide preferred research partners of Volvo Group. Adjacent to the university, you will find Science Park Hovda. It is a technology and research park that binds academy, business, and society together. One of these collaborations is Sweden Game Arena, which is one of the most advantageous development environments within the international computer games industry. It consists of over 200 game developers and over 500 game students and has been an important part of the Swedish games industry for several years. Another great example of collaboration between academia and industry is Asar Industrial Innovation Arena, which offers manufacturing and technology companies a world-class innovation environment to provide new solutions for the future. The University of Hovda has always strived for excellence. Every decision, every achievement has emerged from a focus on creating first-class education and internationally competitive research that makes a difference to society. Welcome to the University of Hovda.
You are muted, Karen. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> forgot about that. <laughs> Glad that you saw that. Well, welcome to the University of Hovde. And uh, that was a short introduction. And we're going to continue talking a bit about the city, of course, as well as uh, the university, which programs we have. So you can see here on the agenda, uh, talk about Sweden, Hovde, University of Hovde, programs taught in English, integration with the business community, tuition and cost, uh, living costs, scholarships, opportunity for master's applicants, application procedure, migration requirements, and then a bit of Q&A. So, uh, well, first of all, just a bit about Sweden. Since I'm Swedish, it sometimes is a bit hard to appreciate all the great things because that's something you take for granted. So I'm going to ask the American guy why Sweden is so great, clearly since he just put himself on an airplane and fly all over the Atlantic to come well, here. Yeah, I mean, for me, the, the biggest thing that uh, is impressive about Sweden is that uh, as we, we say here, little nation, big impact is s so small uh, as far as people. There's only about 10 and a half million people here, which is smaller than a lot of cities in the world. Uh, but um, despite that, they have a disproportionately huge impact when it comes to research and development. Uh, the, the whole country is very focused on the sciences and they actually put more of their GDP per capita into research and development than almost any other country. We're, we're number two, depending on who you ask. Uh, that makes us one of the most innovative uh, places in the world. Uh, and w we have a lot of inventions that Swedes are very proud of uh, here. Just some of them you might recognize uh, some that you use on a regular basis. I know for me, I use uh, Bluetooth, uh, Spotify, modern refrigeration, all of these things Swedes are super proud of. You probably don't use it on a daily basis, but Dynamite uh, is actually one of the more important ones here because uh, that was actually invented by Alfred Nobel. And after he made all the boom money from it, uh, he used that to, to set up the Nobel Prize, which today is you know probably something you've heard of because it's a global prize that rewards research and development and, and breakthroughs in the, the sciences, especially uh, worldwide. And um, Swedes are very proud of the, the Nobel Prize, of course. Uh, and actually this year, uh, one of uh, Sweden's, uh, a Swede, uh, won the Nobel Prize in medicine, right, Karen? Yes, that's absolutely true. Svante Pavo. Pavo. He was uh, rewarded the Nobel Prize in medicine. But Ryan, you say he's like the Jurassic Park guy. Can you please explain that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, that's just uh, kind of a, a joke, my way of thinking about it. But what we, he did was he, he discovered a way that we could uh, gather DNA from fossils. Uh, and so that really opened up a, a whole field of, of new science that we could explore. And I as Karen mentioned, I joke that, that this is how we get Jurassic Park, uh, which we're, we're not quite there yet, but you know, maybe someday. I think that's uh, your secret <laughs> dream, Ryan, to be able to go to Jurassic Park instead of Burwas <laughs> Zoo. Uh, I mean, I have always wanted to ride a Triceratops. That's just... Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> well, yeah. So, yeah, since we're talking about Lago, it's yeah, well, the concept of lagom is it's kind of one of those Swedish words you will get to know when you come here. One of them is vika, which means taking a bun and a coffee. We do that quite a lot. Uh, yesterday it was Lu Lucia, uh, which is like a famous event. And then I forced Ryan to the cafeteria and he had to take a couple of buns. Well, I, I didn't convince him, but, but you know, so he could get the atmosphere taking a fika due to that. And uh, we also have another world, a word called called lagom. It means not too little, not too much, just the perfect amount in the middle. And you can say that Kvavde is kind of that. We're just two and a half hours away by fast train to Stockholm and one hour away from Gothenburg, which is the second largest city in Sweden. And then you can just go to the capital of Norway, Oslo, or the capital of uh, Denmark, Copenhagen, within a couple of hours. So it's really great located. But I mean, why should you want to go anywhere else when you can Stay here in Hovde. Ryan, go ahead. You just yes. love Hovde, don't you? 
it, it really is just the, the epitome of Lagom. It's like the perfect size in that, like, it's not too big, not too little. It's a, a small city of about 60,000 people. We have uh, over on the, the bottom left, you can see some of the pictures of downtown. There's plenty of city here. You got all your shops, your your restaurants, your bars, nightclubs, and uh, nightlife even. Like, the, there's all kinds of stuff to do. And in the fall, in the upper left, you can see images of the, the food festival. This thing is one of my favorites because like uh, a bunch of Swedish vendors set up uh, tents with traditional Swedish foods and you can go and try and uh, taste all these different things that you, you might not normally find. Uh, and then they set up a stage and there's live music all weekend and, you know, dancing and games and all kinds of stuff. But if you're not so into the hustle and bustle of the city, it's Hoved is still perfect for you anyways, because we got just all kinds of green areas and, and kind of quiet places to get away right inside the city. These pictures in the middle of the screen, those are from inside the city. They're like just mixed in with the, the city. Uh, and then if you really want to get away, uh, we have a tiny little mountain, very Lago in and of itself, because it's like technically a mountain, but not like that big you, you can walk up in about 40 minutes it's really nothing uh but once you get up there you're far enough away you're kind of out in the wilderness so to speak you have trails that you can go walking down they got a big lake in the center with a bunch of campfire sites around the like surrounding it uh the community actually even provides uh free wood so you can have your little campfire and roast marshmallows or whatever you like doing in the lake you can go swimming or fishing or whatever you want it's really just a, a little bit of everything here, uh, and I, th I think that's what makes it great. But uh, it's also got a whole lot of uh, history and and other uh, you know heritage to it. Uh, Karen, do you want to tell them about the the church and the castle there? Karen, oh, she must have disconnected. All right, well, uh, so <laughs> in the upper right corner we have uh, the Varnham Cloister Church uh, and. Lacca Castle, which uh, the, the church there is uh, one of the, the more famous churches here in Sweden because uh, a lot of the older kings are, are actually buried there. Uh, and then Lacca Castle, it is uh, just a really nice, uh, very old uh, traditional castle, Swedish castle. It's, it's, it's really cool. Uh, it's right up on the lake and uh, it's beautiful to visit they got a big old cannon out front that i thought was really cool um definitely go check them both out when you're here uh the university was established in 1977 uh it is a public university uh and the uh it's kind of like again very much this Lagom idea. It's it's a little bit old, a little bit new. A lot of our buildings are actually really old military buildings that we've like retrofitted and, and repurposed, and uh, we put all kinds of new tech in there uh, and made it really just kind of nice. And then we also have a bunch of new buildings that are just new and shiny and full of tech to begin with. Uh, one thing I really like in these pictures is that you can see all the seasons here. Uh, I've lived in places that don't have seasons. I am from a place, Michigan, that has fantastic seasons. And Sweden's put even my home to shame. Uh, the, the seasons here are just amazing. The fall is just super rich with the colors and the trees uh, and, and the crisp air. You got winter where you get the cold the cold and the, the nice white blanket of snow, ice crystals from the trees everywhere. Uh, about the time you start getting sick of all that darkness, though, it all melts away. You get this bright, brilliant green springtime. Uh, honestly, it's like the greenest I've ever seen. Uh, just fantastic. And then summer is uh, a lot of folks like to go home and visit their families uh, back home in the summer. And I say that is a mistake. You should instead have your families come visit you here because the Swedish summer is just perfect. It's like 20 to 30 degrees all the time. The sun almost never goes down. Uh, you can stay up all night partying with your friends, take a cat nap for half an hour, and then the sun will be coming back up and you can start all over again. It's, it's really just great. 
Welcome back, Karen. Yes. yes, I'm back. <laughs> I clearly had a bit of a problem with my connection, but I'm back. Uh, so, just yeah. Just in time. You just can take in time <laughs> for my picture, yeah. <laughs> so, some short statistics about the University of Skövde. It was established in 1977. We have about 11,000 students, 550 staff, with two-thirds being academic staff. We have 60 study programs. We have them within bachelor, master, and PhD. Uh, we've also worked very innovative and cross-disciplinary due to the fact that we're a very specialized uh, university. So we only have five schools. Brian is going to mention them later. We have, we 25, have 25, 25 programs that are fully taught in English, with 22 of them being master programs and three of them being bachelor programs. We have international agreements with over 130 universities. We have about... 630 incoming international students and 60 outgoing exchange students. So just some short numbers. And the picture here is uh, of our vice chancellor, Lars Niklasson, but he, we will get a new one from the 1st of January. And uh, mm -hmm. yes, this is an overview of the University of Skövde of our campus. And uh, you can see the university is indicated in blue. It doesn't take more than a couple of minutes to walk uh, walk from one side of the other side to the campus. And you can see it's like embedded in green. So it's like a lot of trees, a lot of lawns, and you know, it's really nice. They have, it, it's very beautiful as you saw on the pictures before. And the green area is where the science park is located. So we integrated with the science park. We're going to talk a bit more about that really soon as well. And then we have the pink area that is a joint area. So the left part belonged to the university and the right part to the science park. And that has to do with the fact that we, we really work closely to the surrounding business community. So, yeah. Ryan? Did so, you... Uh, you Karen just mentioned uh, the business community that we work closely with. And here you can see some of the partners that we work with. Uh, we actually, uh, the, the education itself is really fascinating here, I think, because the programs that you take actually uh, have the opportunity to work with these partners as part of the education. Uh, your, your final project, you, you often are, are working right with them. So anyways, uh, Volvo is our most proud partner, I would say. Uh, we are actually one of five preferred research partners in the field of virtual manufacturing, process point anal analysis, and maintenance. However, we have partners across all the fields that we have education programs for. Uh, those include Scania, ABB, Huawei, Sandvik, IKEA, Microsoft, AstraZeneca, Arla, and a whole lot more that we didn't feel like putting on this particular list. Karen mentioned the Science Park, uh, or the Science Park. Um, and so this is basically, I, I mean, it's a science park. Right? It's, if you know what, anyways, there's a lot of small and medium businesses here, uh, as well as some large businesses that have satellite offices out here. Um, and uh, it's really just a place for uh, a lot of especially new businesses to get started. We have a business incubator, uh, which is a team of people that helps you if you're interested in starting your own business with uh, you know, figuring out how to do that. Uh, and there's also like low cost office space. So uh, it, it really provides a good opportunity that is you know, co-located with campus and uh, allows for our uh, students to, to engage with the uh, industry that they're, they're going into. Also here is the Sweden Game Arena. Uh, and let me tell you, this place is the best for games. If you are interested in game development, then this is where you wanna be. Uh, the city loves games, the school loves games. Uh, and we have some of the best game programs there is. Uh, game Arena is basically this uh, kind of headquarters, so to speak, where you have a whole ton, like 500 game developers and a whole bunch of games, hundreds of game students all working together to, to come up with new ideas and uh, develop new projects. It's very innovative environment. Uh, we also have for, uh, mostly for our engineering students, we have Asset Industrial Innovation Arena. 
Uh, and this is kind of like a tech showroom where you got a whole lot of different uh, advanced technologies. You got, you know, your AR and VR. You can see the HoloLens there. You got robotics. You get, they even got little humanoid robots running around. You might have seen one in the, the video that we played earlier. Uh, and this is really, again, just a fantastic collaboration environment where our students can work with our industrial partners and develop new ideas, uh, new technologies to implement in uh, the manufacturing process as well as for uh, end user uh, interface. We have five schools, as Karen mentioned earlier, that's bioscience, informatics, business, health science, and engineering science. And uh, Karen is going to tell you all about the programs that we offer in those Absolutely. We have a couple of international programs, as, as mentioned before, and uh, if, uh, yeah, in bioscience mainly. So biomedicines are actually belong to the School of Health Sciences, but the other ones, uh, the other bachelor programs in bioscience, molecular biodesign and molecular bioinformatics, they are our bachelor programs as well uh, as a part of the School of Bioscience. And then we have both one year and two year masters that, uh, that are bioinformatics, uh, biomarkers in molecular medicine, cognitive neuroscience, mind and brain, infection biology, as well as molecular biotechnology and system biology with specialization in bioinformatics. And then we have a couple of master programs in informatics. Uh, they're both one and two year master programs. We have them within data science, privacy information and cybersecurity, digital narration, game and culture heritage, game development, games, user experience, as well as serious games. And then we have a couple of more in engineering. We have as well one and two year master programs. And uh, we have a new one from next autumn is computational methods in engineering. We're looking forward to meet all the new students in this program. We also have intelligent automation and virtual ergonomics and design. And from next autumn, our School of Business is also going to offer a master program that is going to be within leadership and organization development a one-year master. And Ryan, you have been a student here for five years and now you're going to be kind of a student employee. So you're the guy to ask about how student life is here, isn't it? Aren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you the first thing that you'll probably notice when you, when you get here uh, is the flat organization. There is no hierarchy. Uh, and, and that really speaks to this idea of equality that is just permeates Swedish society. Um, everybody is equal here. It doesn't matter if you're a teacher, student, we're all working together. Uh, and so you don't call your teachers, you know, professor so-and-so or doctor somebody. Uh, you call them Henrik and you Maria and Ryan. Like that's, everybody is on a first name basis and we're all just kind of professionally casual. Uh, the education is also really um, student-centered, which means that like, you, you know, some places you might spend like 40 hours a week in lectures and, you know, just take notes and take notes and then you go take an exam on your notes and uh, that that's not how it works here. Uh, it's like, depending on your, um, your program, it might be like 10 to 15 hours a week that you're going to spend in lectures and then you're going to fill up a lot of your time with stuff that you schedule yourself, you know, things like uh, working on projects, working on presentations, working on um, self-study and group study, uh, working in the labs, uh, all of these things that, that are very hands-on and practical ways that you can apply the knowledge that you're getting. Um, and, uh, all, you know, it, it's, it's very self-empowered uh, as, as far as the way it's structured. Uh, should note that despite the schedule being uh, light on paper, so to speak, uh, it is definitely full-time studies. Uh, you are going to need to dedicate 40 hours a week uh, on average. Some people, it's a bit more. I've even known people that were studying up to 60 hours a week. Uh, it is full-time work. Uh, there's a lot to learn and you have to, to really kind of buckle down and do it. Um, it's not to say we're going to throw you to the wolves. There's fantastic support organizations here. We have uh, the study support center over at the library, and we have our study and career counselors. Uh, and all of that is uh, these various structures that are designed to, to help you learn how to structure your time, what courses you should be taking, uh, 
over at the the library they even help you with learning how to write your uh your um papers your, your uh cite, citing sources and stuff like that it's there is a lot of structure to help you and not only on the administrative side but from the students as well the, these here are two student organizations that are really uh useful here in, in sweet uh in Havda. um firstly we'll talk about the the student union uh i've been some places where the student union wasn't really useful they were more like a politics playground where kids felt important about themselves uh and here they are actually like the polar opposite of that in that these guys actually sit in on the education meetings with the teachers and administration and they have uh equal say in developing the the curriculum uh for the the program so if for example you have something that you observe about your program that you think could be better or or you know, something that needs to be added, et cetera, you can go to the student union and they'll go to those education meetings and talk it over with the, the, the staff uh, and it'll probably get changed. I've seen it happen. Uh, we, we had a situation in one of my programs that we were like, oh, this could be better. And so we took it to the student union and within a semester, they changed the whole program, made it better. Uh, it, it's really a lot of power that's given to the students. And that's one of the reasons that we're able to keep the education top notch here in Sweden is because uh, there is that constant feedback from the, the students themselves that, that goes to enforcing, uh, uh, protecting the, the education as far as the quality goes. Uh, then we also have ESN, that's the Erasmus Student Network. It's not just for Erasmus students, it's for everybody, uh, but they are primarily focused on internationalization and mobility. Uh, and so they're gonna organize a whole lot of social events uh, for you guys to, to meet other people uh, coming from all over the world uh, here and, and doing stuff like that. They are also advocates for things outside of your academics that maybe, you know, if you have issues with your housing, for example. Um, and then one of my favorite things about them is that they organize these trips so that you can visit some of the areas nearby uh, while you're here in Sweden. Uh, and really kind of get the most out of your time. My favorite of those is a trip that they do up to Lapland, which is like way up north past the Arctic Circle. Uh, and you go up there in the winter when it's dark and snowy, you know, everything is covered in snow. And uh, you can do things like ride with the sled dogs. Uh, you can ride snowmobiles, go ice climbing, visit the, the uh, hotel that's completely made out of ice. Uh, jump in a frozen lake and then hop in a hot sauna, really weird northern things that you probably won't do anywhere else in the world. Uh, both these organizations are great to get involved with. I highly recommend them when you come here. I think it's actually good for your health to uh, that studies have proved to like take those cold, uh, yeah, cold swims or cold baths. <laughs> I don't know why, but clearly, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, you're, you're, you're right. It's a longer explanation than we need to get into here. <laughs> uh, but when you come here, you also can take some free Swedish courses. Uh, there's two of them. One is about Swedish society and Swedish culture. Uh, and this one's really fun. Uh, I highly recommend it. It is, uh, you, you learn about like traditions and holidays uh, and, you know, history of Sweden, all of that kind of stuff. It's very easy. It fits. It's only three credits you can see there. So you can fit in with your classes. Really simple. Uh, definitely worth your time. Uh, then we also have Swedish for foreign students, also obviously worth it. Uh, this, you can learn a little bit of Swedish. Uh, this'll just, it's not a real in-depth course. It'll just get you to be able to communicate the basics in Swedish, but it's definitely worth doing if you want to know some Swedish. That said, you don't need Swedish for education here. Everything is English. Everybody speaks English. You're fine only knowing English. But if you want to stay here in Sweden uh, after your studies, it definitely helps. Uh, knowing Swedish is a, a great tool. Uh, so I, I definitely recommend uh, if you are interested in that, go into it. When you come here, you will probably, unless you're a citizen of the EU or EEA, need to pay some tuition fees. And those are going to be 135,000 Swedish crowns for any per year for any of our programs in bioscience, cognitive neuroscience, informatics, engineering, and game development. Basically, all of our programs except business. That's going to be paid 
in installments of 67,500 Swedish crowns before every semester, which comes out to about 6,500 euros per semester. Now, I mentioned business is different. This one's actually a bit cheaper. It's only 95,000 Swedish crowns for the full year, uh, which comes out to payments each semester of about 4,500 euros. You'll also want to think about living costs when you come here. Uh, and so these here, the numbers that you see on screen, they're an estimate from the study in Sweden group. Uh, they are kind of an average for students in Sweden in general, but for the most part, they reflect how things are here in Hravda uh, pretty accurately. The one thing that I would say is different is that local travel number. Uh, here in Hravda, you can walk everywhere. So I don't know very many people that spend any money on local travel. You can instead put that on your food budget. Uh, maybe eat a little bit better you know but anyways it'll all come out to around 800 to a thousand euros for a single student uh is the typical amount that we expect the accommodation there uh is the 3900 swedish crowns that are quoted it's a little bit on the higher side for our accommodations we have four different uh, accommodation areas that we uh help people uh, or we arrange for uh inbound international students uh and these range between three thousand to four 1,100 Swedish crowns per month, which is about 300 to 400 euros. These are only single rooms and families are not allowed. Uh, also pets are not allowed. So if you have family or a pet or a dinosaur, whatever, you need to go to the town housing office instead of the Bostetter. Uh, they have a ton of student housing uh, as well. And this is, they're actually, in my opinion, a little bit nicer than ours even. Um, I live in Hrodobostadr housing, uh, almost everybody does. Uh, so definitely get in their queue uh, because that, that's how you sign up for theirs. They have a queuing system. So like the sooner that you get in the queue, the better. So as soon as you get you notice of your admission, actually whether you're uh, applying to ours or Hrodobostadr's or both, get in there as soon as you get your notice of admission because that is going to only benefit you to be in early. Uh, if you want more information about this, you can contact student housing at his.se. Scholarships. Yes, everyone wants to know a bit about scholarship. Now, now, we ha now that we have introduced you to this really great university and all the programs, and then of course you feel like, how can we get here? And is there a possibility for funding? And of course there is. Uh, we have the the University of Hövdes Master Scholarship, which covers 50% of the tuition fees. So it's like a fee favor for 50%. Uh, however, the scholarship holders need to cover the remaining fee as well as living expenses. As mentioned, it's only available for master applicants and also the, the master applicants needs to apply on time via university admission and choose Hövde as their first option. And it's open for application uh, in yeah, if you're planning to study here during the spring, it's before you need to send in your application before the 1st of September. And if you're planning to come this autumn, uh, then you have to send in your application before the 1st of February. And it's very important that you record a video and write a motivation letter and so on. And that's, that's one of the most important things when you apply. But you can see on our website as well and also ask Avit and he will tell you more about it. And uh, then we also have, a, a, there's another scholarship called Swedish Institute Scholarship for Global Professional, and it's a really great scholarship. It covers the whole full tuition fee as well as the living costs. So you get like a monthly allowance on, I don't know, I think they, it's about 10 They even pay for your travel to get here. It's really fantastic. Uh <laughs> it's true. It's a really great one. And then you get a lot of networks and uh, that you can belong to as a, as a yeah, yeah, as a student that has received this uh, scholarship scholarship applicant and it's open for application it starts in february in 2023 and only available for master's students and the thing is you can apply for both scholarship because we're uh, even though the, it's the swedish institute uh, we're having a dialogue with them so we will solve that no worries about that so apply for both of them if you i just have to highlight that it doesn't cover all countries so you can check out it on the website or talk to Avit. 
And then we also have the deadlines for uh, universityadmission.se. It's like this national agency, uh, that governmental agency that all application goes through. So and the autumn admission round uh, is soon. And uh, the application deadline for this autumn admission round is on the 16th of January. So you have about a month to apply. And then you have also a couple of more days if you haven't gotten all your, your documents, document that you could, um, that you could upload. Uh, and it's on the 1st of February, you need to submit all the documents. And you also have to pay the application fee before the 1st of February. It's about 900 Swedish crown or 90 euros. Otherwise, they're not going to look into your application. And then you will get notified uh, with your selection results. And it's going to be, if you have applied for a master program, on the 13th of uh, March of 2023. And then on the 5th of April, uh, if you have applied for a bachelor. And we're also going to have an inter international introduction program that is going to be on the 21st of August. And I really recommend you to come there. Ryan is going to be, he always walk around and talk with the students and you will see him. He probably have some, I don't know, sometimes they have like green t-shirt and or a pink, you know, it's like where, where they say the University of Hövde, he used to be a buddy. So you'll know, you notice him and he'll talk to you. So uh, he always... And then it's going to be the first program meeting on the 28th of August. And just some information about the required documents for the master programs. It's important that you have your bachelor degree certificate in original language and an official translation in English. And uh, you also have to need a great transcript showing all the semesters during your bachelor studies and proof of english skills well it depends on from which country you come from but avit he will give you all the information you need about that and uh, because from some countries you need to prove your english skills and from other countries uh, you don't don't need it depends and uh, then you also need to have a passport copy and if you're a final year bachelor student a statement of your enrollment certificate and it's also just important to highlight if you have gotten married, so you have changed your last name, that, so it's not the same on the passport as your grade transcripts, upload your marriage certificate, it's important. And for the bachelor programs, then you have a, up, then you need to upload your upper secondary school certificate in original language and official translation in English, grade transcript, proof of English skills equivalent to studies at upper secondary level in Sweden known as English 6 and here as well a passport copy and just some short information like the Swedish migration agency requirements as soon as you have uh, gotten approved uh, accepted to the university you need to apply for a residence permit and to be able to do that you need to uh, be admitted into full-time studies studies must also be campus-based and you need to be able to support yourself during the time for which you are applying for a residence permit and students apply for one year at a time and if you're coming with your family then you have to apply for them as well at the same time and then you need to be able that you can support for your family as well kids and husband and or wife and you have to pay a possible tuition fee before you send in the application so they know that you will come here and just we want to highlight something uh, that after you have finished your studies <laughs> you have a possibility to apply for a residence permit to look for a job do an internship or open up your business in Sweden upon graduation up to a year after so that's like a bonus if you have been here getting your credits and everything in your degree so uh, and you can also meet us online and the thing is that we have been having a couple of webinars uh, with a different program. So this is, uh, we have shortened them down. So you can check out, it's just, it depends, but it could be somewhere between seven to 15 minutes where you will hear the program director talk about the programs. Because Ryan and I can talk on a general basis about the different programs, but they will know, yeah, they're specialists within the programs. Ryan, of course, know a couple of more programs because he have been studying them. But in the program directors, they will talk about the courses, what you will discover and, you know, which in 
which working field you might work and so on. So a couple of those you can check out. And then we also have student ambassadors that you can get in touch with. They, they are focusing on um, describing how it is to live here. So if you need to have help with how to apply and so, things like that, then you talk to Avit um, or you can send us an email as well. But, but these are, they're going to present the student perspective, like you know, where do I buy, you know, my favorite spices or how it is, uh, yeah, how does the facilities look like and is it stressful before I have my examination and uh, do I get a lot of new friends and where, and you know, it's like all those kind of things about being a student so that you can ask them. And now I think we've covered everything. So time for the Q&A. That's good. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, uh, you can hear me, right? Yes, yep. we can hear you. That's good. And thanks, Rahan and Karin, like for uh, such a nice presentations, actually. So we got to know actually a lot, actually, about the universities and so on. Actually, it was quite long. I think like uh, we covered, I mean, almost everything, actually. <laughs> we, we try to be very comprehensive. It cuts down yeah, on the exactly, Q&A. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was just thinking about that. I mean, the things, I mean, usually students are supposed to ask, you actually covered all of the questions. I mean, what they are <laughs> going to ask, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's the goal. <laughs> uh, that's good, actually. Um, all right, then, no problem. But I mean, still, um, we got a few questions from here. I mean, once again, <clears throat> a scholarship, but I mean, it is always important. I mean, it's always mm. important. So like a... One questions about a scholarship. So just tell them in short. I mean, I know like you discussed about it, but in short. Mm -hmm. just tell yes, in short, there are two. One from yeah. us, one from the Swedish Institute. Apply to both. Yeah, and the one from the <laughs> Swedish Institute covers everything. Well, the one, for even the living ex expenses and the one from us just cover 50% of the tuition fee. Exactly. Actually, here I would like to add um, with Ryan and Karin that like um, so and for both of these scholarships, there are some deadlines and so on. And yes. in that case, first of all, to be eligible for the scholarship, first of all, first requirement, you must have to make your application on time. Because see, this is the things actually I would like to emphasize. I know like sometimes students are just thinking about the scholarship and so on, but they forgot to make the application on time. So mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter how qualified you are. No. You will be, you will not be eligible. I mean, your application won't go for the any anything actually. Mm -hmm. So because you will be considered as late application and as late applicant, you cannot be selected for the, I mean, a scholarship at all, though you do have all of the qualifications and so on. So I would like to really emphasize on it. Please, dear students, whoever you are watching this is now or later on, please apply on time, the deadline to make the application by 16th of January. And all other documents should, should be submitted by 1st of February. So that's it. I mean, if you go apart from that, you will be considered as late applications. And therefore, even though you are qualified, you might not get the scholarship. So this is the things I really wanted to emphasize, you know, what I mean, because mm. sometimes the students, I mean, they overlook these things. Mm. And, and make uh, it the University of Hovde as your first priority, one of yes. our programs. That's also yes. important. Exactly. So. And mm. the University of Hovde is providing 50% of tuition fees over. So that's a really good deal, actually, I will say. Of course, as uh, Rahan and Karin said, that there is another scholarship called SA scholarship. That one, you will cover like 100% tuition fees over, but it will also give you, I mean, living expenses and so on. But at the same time, Keep these things in mind. That is very competitive. It is. Very University fun. one will be much easier <laughs> to get than that mm. one because um, the, I mean, um, percentage rate. If I calculate it, it is like around two to three percent. Mm. Two to three percent of the students gets the scholarship who applies for it. So mm. it is very tough actually. But on the other hand, I mean, getting the university scholarship, I will say, much easier. Even I would like to add actually, Rahan, like I do have same experiences actually. Before I came to Sweden, actually, I was in UK for my bachelor degrees. And actually from there, I came to Sweden as a student. 
though of course i was not came to at a uh, university of khob there um i came to like a linear university mm -hmm. so even i got like 75% scholarship here so it's a really good deal like when international students is getting this kind of a scholarship it is um they can save money and at the same time it is a motivating things for them yeah. Yeah. so that's really good things and so like a, I'd say like a, I do have some similarities with you like a, as you came here as a student, uh, I mean you did your bachelor masters and going for PhD. So I came here as master assistant, started finished my masters and now I'm going doing my own business. So uh, actually like um, effort from Karin, Rahan, I mean Rahan and Obijit like myself like we could be one of the good example for the international students who can come to Sweden and then establish themselves in their own way because mm. everyone yeah. has their own talent and their own field so then i mean but the thing is that there are opportunities what i would like to emphasize so either you go for the business or you go for i mean again i mean further studies or you go for job there are opportunities but you have to find it out by yourself what are you best at yes mm. yes Right. Um, so there is one more uh, one question. Um, does the master's scholarship have any other eligibility requirements other than applying early? Yes. Yes. So it's like, uh, of course, uh, you need to send in a video and write a motivation letter. So the way we are taking care of our handing out or, or the process of getting a scholarship at the University of COVID is that you will uh, record um, a video and sending information, working experience, and a couple of things more. Uh, but and then the program directors will look into it, and then they will check things like, uh, you know, if you seem to be very motivated, if you have a, a good uh, level of knowledge within the field, and stuff like that. So and then they're going to make a ranking and send it to the admission and the international office. And then we look into it and we try to make sure that it, we get diversity. So, you know, not all people from a certain country or gender or applying for a specific program get all the scholarships. So we try to make sure that it, it's like good distributed between different programs and nationalities and, and gender as well. So, so people will have a good chance to get a, a scholarship. That's good. <clears throat> and there is a question, so like, uh, does the MBBS doctors students are eligible to apply for the scholarship EPS? How uh, it will be ass assessed because our educational market and uh, marking policy is no CGP system and so on. I don't really know what that is. Okay, so no, I mean, I think okay, I can I can give that answer. I think. Um, so, um, thanks for your queries uh, regarding the fact. See. Uh, university is not looking for only CGP, as he just mentioned about like a, um, probably the student is from Bangladesh. So in his cases, what he wanted to say that like a, um, in Bangladesh, usually like a students from medical, they do not have any CGP. They just either fire or fail. So the answer is that actually university is not, of course, they look for CGP or so on but at the same time they don't look for only cgpa at the same time in, for university of kobe to make the scholarship i mean i mean application you must have to send i mean motivation later and at the same time your videos hmm. so it will also show how motivated you are hmm. so yeah. it is and not only your cgpa where they cannot decide based on your CGP, then definitely they will go for go for like how, how about your English skills? I mean, when you are making the presentations, and at the same time in your presentations, I mean, you must have to prove that you are really motivated and you are really willing to get these degrees and so on. So that this is the things I mean you have to use in your cases. Hope it is clear to you. And I'll, I'll add the the evaluation process is, is very much a holistic view, uh, mm -hmm. and, and so like that that whole motivation aspect is is a major part of it. Like, yes. Uh, yes. I, I would not get hung up on on the the CGPA thing. Yes. No. Exactly. exactly. 
so motivations and also like when you're making the videos how you're making the yeah. videos your expression it's not only what sometimes like you know what i mean uh students the problem is that they're saying something very positive but the their expression is not like a by looking at their expressions you will see actually it is not coming from their heart it is just coming from their mouth hope you understand what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. Because sometimes when students ask for the scholarship and so on, I mean, if you want tries to make it like very nice and so on, so say they something say all the time all positive things. It's understandable. But the mm -hmm. thing is also by looking at their expression, you can see that like how I mean it's coming from their heart or their mouth. Hope you understand what I'm trying to say, Karin. Yeah. Ryan, right. So I think their expression is also important in the videos. I mean, all of the things, you know what I mean? So yeah, that, like I, mean, I, like I said, it's, it's very holistic. It's very, all, yes. everything all together. We, we exactly, exactly. Look at all. Exactly. Yeah. And also sometimes uh, if they have work experiences, what they have done, I mean, how it is related with their previous studies and mm -hmm. how they're going to utilize their studies later on. So everything should be included, actually. So it's mm -hmm. lots of things. It's not only CGP. Yeah. So these are no. the methods. Exactly. We say usually good academic merits, motivation, text and video. So, but motivation is very important that, yeah. I mean, if you have a passion for the subject, we could tell. <laughs> exactly. 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 So these are most important thing. So hope it is clear to the students actually. Um, and what other, um, there is another question. What uh, criteria increase the chances of receiving the scholarships? I think we discussed it. Already. Yeah, we, we just covered that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, so another question, like, um, do we submit our IELTS or GRE score when applying? So I think it is, of course, yes, right? Uh, it depends I mean, on, uh, yeah, it depends, depends on, on the country, country, I guess. Previous, yes. Of your previous studies. Uh, and all of that information is on university admissions. Uh, I think Evajit, you, you know where that is, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. I know, so, I know about uh, Talk uh, to him and he will help you get your story out. <laughs> exactly. So actually like we are we are recruiting students from many countries and therefore like um, I had opportunity to know about like many countries documents and even about their requirements and so on. So basically, yeah. I mean, even for you information, I mean, we are working from Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, and also African side like Nigeria, Kenya, Zimbabwe, yeah. Kenya. So I mean, many countries, many very countries, different many things. countries. And yeah. also, we are planning to work from like Bhutan and then also Vietnam, Turkey. So we want to be really international. We don't want to focus on just specific countries and so on. No, yeah. I mean, our business model is a bit different than others, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway so these are the questions actually mm -hmm. so i think yeah we got i mean most of the things i mean thanks rahan and karin i mean you covered most of the things what i have seen and that's why maybe like a uh, students they couldn't ask you uh, many more questions and so on so dear audiences we are almost end of the session today uh we are having discussions with the uh, university of cope there of course uh, about University of Kobde and in general about study in Sweden and so on. So still we'll be here for one or two more minutes. Still, if you have any last minute questions, feel free to write down it. Our guest will answer your questions. So by this time, I mean, Rahan and like Karin, if you have any comments for the students, you can share it for them, like in conclude, please. Well come here join us it's a lovely city to live in like ryan just came here to have the he's enjoying it he has been here for five years and he's going to stay here forever i think yeah, <laughs> yeah i think so it's, it's, i it's think it's so. a trap it's a trap like you you'll come here <laughs> and you will love it so much that you won't want to leave that that's my experience uh <laughs> and, actually and... this is what happens actually sometimes you know you go somewhere <laughs> and you fall in love and you don't want to move it from there yeah. i mean actually like of course for me it's not a cope day but for me it's a vacuum uh, being honest like even i came here in 2015 as international students so i finished my studies i mean we started my own companies and everything but still even though i can work from anywhere of the world for me same i just need my laptop and phone and then internet basically uh, but still i'm living in vacuum i mean I'm not still thinking nice. to move from here. I mean, because I fall in love with the city. So this is <laughs> why it also happens. 
<laughs> it happens. And, and it happens. what's so great about the, uh, the University of Hovde is that we're a medium-sized uh, city, so we have about 60,000 inhabitants. But for the city, the municipality of Hovde, the university is very important. So when the international students come, uh, the mayor will, will offer them a fika and he will talk to them and you know so like a special thing because it's important and we work really closely by with the surrounding business community and we recently uh, just a few months ago actually are, got a new this uh, we got a battery fabric we're going to build a battery fabric in a city that i live 30 minutes away from Kvavde. so it's going to mean that thousands of people will get new jobs and as well job opportunities as well as the university is going to work closely because it's it's i volvo is going to be involved in this process as well because i think the, they're going to uh, produce batteries to volvo so so it's like it's a region that is increasing but it's kind of good with the medium size because you can get a lot of contacts if you write your Yes. thesis somewhere at the company or I don't know R Ryan wrote it at, at the hospital it's like you get a lot of contacts that yes. you perhaps could not get in a bigger city because the competition is bigger so it's like I, I like the fact that we're really working close by the surrounding business community so yeah so that's a really great things actually like in medium size I mean places you will get to know more people you know there is more interactions but in bigger places you won't get that opportunity to interact with each one yeah. Yeah. because there's yeah. lots of people so as even i can see actually i have be, i had opportunity to visit university of cope a couple of times and mm -hmm. so i can see like even accommodation is very nearby and so on so like you know if the one is living in very short distance so yeah, even though I, I live in the student accommodation, it takes me five minutes to walk to work. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I've been there actually. So we had few students over there, so I visited that those places mm -hmm. as well. So it's like a, even though maybe you are not friend, you don't know that guy by name, but every single day you are you know crossing each other, saying hey, hey, hey. Yeah. So you know it's a nice feelings. <laughs> I can yeah. I can understand that, right? Mm. It's really nice feelings actually. Um, mm. It's really nice feelings. And um, even like even as a student in, of course, as I said, I didn't live in maybe Kobe, but I can relate it as I lived in, in I mean, Vekwa. So, I mean, student accommodation is really nice because you will get more opportunities to meet with more free parents and so on from different parts mm. of the world. That is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. It is. Well, Randy, what tell something why it's so great, the city, the university. Please. I mean, I, I think we've pretty much covered it. Like, it, I, yes. I, I think, you know, uh, Avjit, you, you mentioned uh, Vakwa. Like, I, I think that really anywhere in Sweden is going to be fantastic. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I think that Swedes just have figured out how to do society the best way. Uh, but for my money, Kravda is is the place to be, like, because it, like I said, it's just the perfect size. That, that's really yes. what it boils down to. Is it, it's just so it, it's small enough that you are going to have all of that kind of personal connection, mm -hmm. uh, and also everything is so convenient. I mean, everything is five to ten minute walking distance away. Uh, you don't need to to take buses or you know all, have a car or any of that stuff. Uh, as an American, we all Everybody has a car and you drive forever to get anywhere. Uh, and I absolutely love the fact that I have not had a car in the last five years. Uh, I just don't have a need for one. There's no reason. Uh, it's fantastic. Yes. Um, yes. And so, yeah, the, the size is really the thing that I think exactly. has over, over a lot of other places. I mean, most of the things here, you can do it by cycling distance. Yeah. It is very nearby. And also one more thing I would like to add, of course, you discussed about it. But I mean, as for the international students, sometimes it is very important. As um, Karin and Rahan said that like you have do have very good relationship with like a BDM Science Park in Kobde. Mm -hmm. So and as there are a lot, I mean, so far, even I know like University of Kobde, they are working with a um, good number of companies very closely. So yes. that means is studying in University of Kobe, it will uh, increase your chances to get the internship in the companies. Mm -hmm. And when you will get the internship, and if you can perform well 
you can prove yourself so that you will have even also very good opportunities to get the job over there in the company or even you can create your network and where you can get the references from there so this is how also you can be benefited yeah that, that's how i ended up with uh, the phd position that i'm going to be moving yes. into is is through the the education the the final project Yes. I was working with this uh, organization uh, for mm -hmm. my final project, and they they liked the work that I was doing, and they said, "Would you be interested in doing a PhD?" And I said, "Of course." And for everybody who's watching who doesn't know, PhDs here in Sweden are are like they're they're a merger between student life and and uh, and, and uh, a job. So you are paid for the the position, like it is a, a full thing. Uh, yes. So it's a really job. thing. It's, it, it it's is really a job, great yeah. thing. See, it's a job. It's giving you money end of the day, and mm -hmm. on the other hand, after four or five years, you are getting doctorate degree. So that's yes. a huge thing. <laughs> but I mean, if you do some other job, of course, you are not getting doctorate right. degree. So right, right. you, so basically, <laughs> you are you are getting money and you are getting doctorate degree. So that is a fantastic thing. I mean, what else could be better than this? Actually, in most <laughs> of the countries, when you are doing PhD, actually, you are not getting that this much money. What you are getting in Sweden. Right. Uh, so far, I know it is it is a reasonable salary, like a, yes, a good living is, amount for, for even PhD some research. countries. Even I know some countries, even students, they are looking for PhD. They have to pay it from their own pocket. Right. Yeah. Right. Rather than they're getting the salaries. Forget <laughs> about getting the salaries. Even they have to pay for the study because over mm -hmm. there it is treated just as education. But yes. here it is treated as job. So. Yeah. What else could be best than this? Actually, no way. <laughs> but, so, but yeah, right. like, like you were saying, though, a, a lot of people also uh, move from like get connections in their final projects and, and move directly into jobs. I've known a lot of people who ended up in just regular jobs through their their final projects. Yes. So that's a fantastic opportunity. That's great. All right, then. So another questions, oh, not questions. He said, like, yes, he's watching it and he's enjoying it. Thank you so much for the watching this, uh, watching the sessions. So anyway, we are almost end of the sessions. We are not going to take it longer at all. So before we end up, um, just Rahan and Karin, just final comments. That's the final comments. Thanks Welcome for joining to the and university. hope to see you in the fall. <laughs> yeah, that's where I said. Hope to see you in the fall. Welcome to the University of Pravda. And thank you All for right. having us here. Yes, thank you. All right, then. So, uh, dear viewers, um, thanks to you all, I mean, for joining us today. So hope you have enjoyed us. And still, if you have any more queries about studying uh, Kogde or studying Sweden in general, whatever it is, please feel free to contact with um, GRK International Education Consultants. Um, on the screen, you do have our um, contact details. So please, please feel free to contact with us. And yeah, so please um, make sure you are making the applications one more time. Just reminding, making the applications on time and everything goes online. I mean, on time so that like, um, hopefully by uh, end of uh, August, we can see you in Sweden. <laughs> We are really looking forward to see you all in Sweden, actually. All right, so don't delay. Just do it quickly. Thank you so much. And um, Raihan and Karin, um, thanks for joining with us here today. I wish you both a very ha a happy Merry Christmas and New Year. Well, Thank thanks you. for having us, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Take Thank care. You. Have a good day. Have a good you day. Too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.